Good morning, Redeemer kids. Happy New Year. We are going to sing a song that we know and we love. I cannot think of a better way to start the new year than to sing this song together. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you and we thank you for another year. I thank you, God, that you are still faithful. You are still with us and you love us oh so much. Lord, we love you. We ask that as we sing these words, we'd be reminded of who you are and who you have made us to be, who you've called us to be as your children. In your name we pray, amen. All right, let's sing this song together. Sing, who am I? Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Sing who the sun, who the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my father and happy new year. I cannot believe it. We made it to a new year. It is 2021. Can you believe it? Well, in this new year, we are actually going to jump back. So we're jumping forward, but we're jumping back. We're jumping back into the Old Testament. So if you can even think back weeks and weeks and weeks ago, right? I mean, probably months ago, we were talking about the Old Testament and we were going through the judges, 
right? And if you can remember, if you can recall all the way back, Israel kind of went through this cycle, right? So they didn't have a king yet, but and God was their leader, but the Israelites would get complainy, they'd get whiny, and they would say, man, we really wish we were back in Egypt, right? Where we didn't have to work for stuff, or, you know, or uh, we wish that we had a king like all the other kingdoms out there, right? And they would be so ungrateful for all that God had done for them. They would forget all the things that God had done for them and all that it took to get them to the promised land. And so they'd get complainy. And so then God would send an enemy kingdom to conquer them. So Israel would be able to see no, we actually don't have it better, right? We don't have it better when we have when we have a king that's not God. And so an enemy king would conquer them. And then Israel would realize, man, we had it much better when God was our leader. And he, God is a kind and wonderful king. And he rules us with love and justice. And so, so the Israelites would realize their sin, realize how their complaining was wrong, and then they would call out to God, and God would hear them, and then he would raise up a leader from amongst the Israelites, and then they would conquer that kingdom that had oppressed them, right? And so we are back. We are back in that cycle over and over again, and our lesson today comes from Judges, the early part of Judges, Judges chapter 6, and we talk about Gideon. Now, I'm sure a lot of you know the name Gideon. Yes, and it comes from the Bible, and he is one of the judges. But before he was a judge, he was the leader that God had chosen to raise up to conquer the kingdom that had conquered the Israelites. So the Israelites had gone through that cycle. They were complaining and whining and ungrateful and saying how they wished they would be like everyone else all the other kingdoms who had a, an, a human king as opposed to God being their king. And so God had allowed them to be conquered by the Midianites. And so they were conquered by the Midianites and the Israelites called out to God to save them. And so God decided to raise up Gideon. And Gideon was a very unlikely hero. He was very afraid. He was very scared. And he, he came from... Uh, a very small tribe in Israel. And so, but an angel of God told, came to Gideon and he said, Gideon, God has chosen you. You are a mighty, Gideon, mighty warrior. God has chosen you to free his people, to save his people from the Midianites. And Gideon says, are you sure? Are you sure that God has chosen me? Me. I come from one of the smallest tribes in Israel. How could it be me that God has chosen? But the angel said, but God will be with you. God will be with you. And we know God is the one that does it. God is the one that does that saving work. And God uses weak people, people who we might think can't do much. God chooses them to do his mighty work. So we know God gets the glory, not the people. And so um, when the time came for, for them to raise up in battle, uh, Gideon sounded a horn and he called all these people uh, to him. Uh, thousands of soldiers came, of Israelites came to fight. And, but Gideon wasn't sure that it was time. So he asked God for a sign. And he said, God, I'm gonna lay out a fleece. So like, like a lamb's skin, right? I'm gonna lay out a fleece overnight. And if when I wake up, all the ground all around the fleece is dry, but the fleece is wet with dew. You know dew, sometimes when you, when you get up early in the morning and it's all wet outside, like on your car, on the grass, if you have a trampoline or something, that's, that's dew. And so if the fleece is wet but the ground is dry, I know that it's time. I know that it's time that you've called us to battle and that you will be with us. And so God does that. God does that sign for Gideon. And so, but then Gideon wasn't totally convinced. He wasn't quite ready to do what God had told him to do yet. And so Gideon says, okay, God, one more, one more time. If now I'll put the fleece out and the fleece will be all dry, but the ground all around will be wet with dew. 
now, then, then I'll know, then I'll know that it's time that you'll be with us and you will fight this battle for us. And so God does it. God does it again. Now, that is so loving and kind of God to do that, to help Gideon, to help Gideon, to help him see that God really would be with him. And so God does it. He does that sign. So the ground all around was wet and the fleece was dry. And so Gideon says, okay, it's time. We're going to fight. But then God tells Gideon, you have too many people. You have too many warriors. So I want you to send home. I want, I want you to narrow it down because I want everyone to know that I'm the one. God is the one who is going to win this battle for you. You're not the one doing it. It's not going to be about you. It's going to be about me, God. And so Gideon says to the, to the whole Israelite army, he says, whoever of you is afraid, you may go. Which you'd think it'd be a lot of people, and it was. So many people left, and so they only had 10,000 left. And if you think about it, that's not a lot of people. That's not a lot of people to fight a huge battle, right? Especially for a whole, fighting the whole Midianite kingdom. That's not a lot of people. And so they, they only had 10,000. But then God said, that's still too many people. That is still too many people. And so God has this test. And so they, Gideon takes people down to the river. And anyone who drank from the river, like, like they put their face towards water and they just sucked up the water, then that's one kind. And then whoever cupped the water with their hands and drank like this was another kind of person. So whoever just sucked out of the river, sucked the water out of the river, they were sent home. And whoever cupped the water to drink it, like this, were going to be kept. Guess how many were left? Random guess. 5,000. 4,000. 3,000. 1,000? No. 300 were left. Only 300 soldiers. And God said, that's the right number. That's the amount. And so they go to battle. And the Israelites blow their trumpets. They sound their horns. They have, carry their torches. And God confuses the Midianite armies. And they turn against each other. And they fight each other. And then the Israelites pursue them. And the battle is won. God wins the battle. God is the one that does it. It would have been impossible for Gideon's army of 300 people to defeat an entire kingdom but they do it because God is the one doing it. And so after the battle is won, the Israelites say, Gideon, you're gonna be our king. Way to go, Gideon, you did it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Gideon says, no, God did it. God did it for you. But you know what? They still didn't learn their lesson. And we're gonna see, they're gonna go through this cycle again and again and again right? But what we can see in this lesson, what we see from the life of Gideon is that one, God chooses weak people to do mighty things to show his strength. But then also like the Israelites could not defeat Midian on their own. We cannot fight our sin on our own. What do we need? We need a savior. We need someone to come and save us from our sins because we cannot do it ourselves. And that's where Jesus comes in. Jesus saves us from our sins because we cannot do it. And ultimately, he's the one that gets the glory. He is the one that gets all the praise for bringing us into his family, for changing us, for making us more like him, or making us holy. And the Bible calls it sanctification by that process by which we grow and we look more and more like Jesus. We model the fruits of the spirit and these things that are growing in our lives. And so Jesus is the one that gets that glory. It's not us being, oh, this person's so great. This person's so awesome. No, it's Jesus. You say it's Jesus. Jesus is so great. Jesus is so awesome. All right, boys and girls. So as we go through this week, let's remember, let's take time for all the little things to know that it's God working out these things in us 
and he is the one that gets the glory and only he is mighty enough to save us because he is just that great. You pray with me? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you and we think you are so great. Thank you, Lord, for, for saving us. Thank you for making us white as snow. Thank you for doing what we cannot do for ourselves, which is to save us from our sins. God, I pray that we would remember that this week and we would celebrate that this week and that we would thank you every moment of every day for bringing us into your family. We love you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Bye, friends. Mm -hmm.